Your boy is about to learn to become a sound designer. Gang, gang. So that was my uh, version of uh, the sound effects for Tifa's uh, somersault attack in uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, So this was like my first time actually doing sound design. I was inspired by Blip Sound uh, and their recent sort of stuff, uh, working on recreating some of their sound effects for Final Fantasy VII Remake. So what I wanted to try was um i think they did like cross slash and um planets protection i wanted to have a go at somersault so i basically want to uh show my breakdown on how i made uh the sound effects um or you know what i did with it the processing involved and stuff like that um but first foot bands i'm gonna play what the sound effects sound without all the effects and processing <laughs> Sounds pretty crappy. Um, once I put all the effects and processing back on, it sounds a little something like this, which we've heard. First, we're going to look at first few seconds of the uh, clip, which. Uh, Tifa sort of does spins and does a pose, right? Um, so we can see like some fire, some fire effect coming across Tifa as she gets into pose uh, and then she does a little spin. So what I wanted to do, what I needed was like a sort of sound effect that could sort of stand in as a, like a whooshing fire um, once processed. So this, this sound effect here, is actually, if I take it off, take off the effects, it's actually just an engine roaring, um, which I got from uh, a GTC pack. Uh, Where is it? I believe it's here. Um, So what I did with that was um, put it through a bunch of effects, um, including... uh, some EQ, which took out the lower range, uh, lower spectrum of the sound. Um, then I put it through Excalibur, which I recently bought from Plugin Boutique. Um, it's a multi effects, uh, a multi effects plugin. And honestly, I haven't actually properly understood how to work for the plugin, but it does have a few good, um, a few good uh, plugins for you to choose from. So I chose this preset, which is a pitch FX01, um, which kind of pitches the sound up while giving it a bunch of a multitude of different sort of weird, funky effects. Um, then we put Raya pitch on or repitch. Um, and I set the, so if I take the repitch off, the effects still sounds kind of high pitch. So we put Raya pitch on and shift the full range down uh, you know, below to make it sound a bit deeper, a bit lower. Um, so it kind of almost sounds like fire. Um, but what we're going to do, what we're going to look at actually, is the second uh, sound effect to give uh, this, this bit a bit more pressure. Uh, words. <laughs> um, to give the sound a bit more body. Um, we've got this sound that I've named called uh, pressurized whoosh. Um, gonna, this is what it sounds like by itself. Um, so what that is, it's basically just the sound of wind turbines. Uh, which I've put inside, I've put a little crossfade uh, in the beginning and the end of the clip. Um, as for processing, literally all it, all it is, is um, a JavaScript uh, plugin called Atlantis Reverb um, by, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correct, Geraint Luff. Geraint Luff. Um, it is free. Um, and I'll put a link in the description to a whole bunch of his um, plugins that uh, can work in Reaper. And this Atlantis Reverb is one of my favorites to use in almost anything. 
um, especially ethereal vocals. Um, either way, I've used the short and simple preset so that the tail of the reverb isn't super strong. It just gives it a good short bounce of reverb. Because without it, pretty boring. So pair these fire, pair the fire wish and the pressure wish together, and you have. And then with the what I've called pose spin, um, which is this sound. So with the sliding wish, uh, I use the sound effect uh, called sliding wish, which is here. Uh, so I used one of the wishes, dragged it into the project. Um, I then put a little reverb and cut out all the lower end because I don't need it. I just need the higher end because it's quite a fast whoosh as she spins. So the quicker the spin, the higher the sound. Um, so I didn't really need the low end. Um, and then with Ray Pitch, I kind of edited the pitch. Without the pitch, it sounds like this, which is a bit too high. So I wanted to give it some weight without it sounding a bit too weird. So if I do that, you've got this. Moving on. Would be, I would say, the startup to the kicks. So she spin, jumps and spins really quickly while sliding her foot back in a crouching position, getting ready to run up. Then she runs and then she jumps and starts to kick. I wanted to pay extra attention uh, to detail in this part um, because some of the parts in this animation is very easy for people to miss putting sound effects for. For example, here's what this sounds like. Yeah. Um, so what we've got here is uh, a fast spin. Now this I made um, manually using a trick um, that I learned from a blip sound stream uh, in which you basically, if I'm see if I can remember how to do it. So you basically create what's going to be white noise. Um, it's a JavaScript um, plugin within Reaper. Um, and now by default, this will start playing some noise. Um, so I'm going to quickly just lower the volume. So this is what it sounds like by default. Um, and basically what I do is I just create a media item like so. Then you right click and you apply track take effects to items as new take. And then you can remove this and now you have it as a sound. Um, and then you can render it as audio or what have you. Um, and just add some fade to the beginning and end. And that's basically how you create a makeshift whoosh sound. Um, so uh, that's what I did with that fast one. Um, I think I put a bit of repitch to make it sound a bit higher in pitch because it's a very quick spin. Um, and then I EQ'd out the low end. But the footsteps, it is. Uh, footsteps on a metal surface. So I use two footsteps here. One when she spins and lands her feet backwards, uh, like that. And then another where she runs. And like that. Very subtle, but you know, little details make all the difference. Then we have a metal surface slide. Just to go for the her foot sliding against the ground. And then I layer the sound up with a foot slide. Now this is just the sound of dirt, basically. Um, I did put some processing on it uh, to make it sound lower and I EQ'd out quite a bit um, because there was a bit too much detail in the sound. Without it, it sounds like this. It's too bright. Um, so I wanted to dull the sound a bit more by EQing a lot of the sound, basically. But even with all of that, the sound effects sound, the footsteps sound a bit too weak. 
So I added a little mouth pop, which sounds like this by itself. And then processed it um, with pitch, uh, lowering the pitch and with some compression and taking out the high end. And I wanted that to stand in as it's on its own as a footstep. Very hollow, but when paired with the metal footsteps, I don't, it just gives a bit more, a slightly more body to the sound. Um, so the footstep stands out during everything else. So now you have something like this. Let's remove that. And again. And that's how I did the footsteps. And with basically the final part of the attack, what we're going to look at now is the many sounds I used for the two hits of Somersault. Somersault looks like it hits once, but using the visual cues, you can see she runs up and then starts her flip, kicking the enemy once. And that big flash you see on the screen is an indicator of a hit. Right? And then it continues as the enemy is launched into the air. There is another hit created by the shockwave from her kick. So that's hit number two. Um, Got to go through some of the sounds. So we're going to look at the impacts. Um, I wanted a strong, heavy sound um, to mark the impacts of the kicks. It's just an impact sound of someone hitting a door. I didn't really add any processing to it at all. I just lowered the volume because I didn't, it's a really heavy and punchy sound. I didn't really want it to overpower any of the other sound effects, especially since I'm going to be layering things on. But obviously, that is boring. So there's a lot going on. And we want to sort of capitalize on the flashy effects that you see on screen. So we're going to have a look at this sound, which is very fast, very quick. It doesn't actually relate to anything on the screen. What it acts as is a build up to the rest of the sounds. So if I do this, it's just a build up sound. That's all it is. So I'm actually just going to call it build up sound. Then for this, I'm going to call it big impact. We haven't looked at it yet, but we're about to. What this does, it's one big impact sound. If I take off the uh, processing, it sounds like this. Now, I only used one sound because of the processing that was used. There is actually a bit of delay that I used. Now, the sound is actually only played once. That would be because while I processed it, again, with the Excalibur plugin, um, I've used a preset under the keyword phaser called Vibro Phase Echo. And I messed around with it a little bit so that the delay actually times in with the second hit. It negated the necessity for me to put in an extra sound effect. Only one sound still, uh, accounting for both hits. Then we have something interesting that I did. This is a synth that I played um, using a preset from Isotope's Iris plugin. Um, I basically played a note on my keyboard that has a sound for attack and release. What that basically means is when I press the key, it makes a sound. And then when I release, there's also another sound. So this is what it sounds like by itself. Actually, if I get rid of these fade-ins, it sounds like this. So what I basically did is recorded that synth into audio. So then I was able to do a fade in. So the impact of the sound is muddled. Now, because the synth has a sound for both the attack and the release, I was basically just able to press the key on the first hit and release it on the second hit. And then lastly, 
we have another layering effect that I decided to put on, which is a guitar string, or rather an ethnic guitar string. I think the instrument is called a zither. By itself, the zither sounds like this. So it's just one zither string, a very low one at that. Um, but I decided to add some processing onto those sounds, um, which is basically just a pitch. Um, because the sound uh, originally was really low, I wanted to make it super high. And to get rid of the sort of thud from plucking a string, I added a, a, a fade in from the start. So now you have something like this. Sorry, with the first one, I wanted the impact of the string. But the second one does not have the impact of the string. Instead, it fades in. So with all that together, you have something sounding like this. And then at the end of it all, once everything is complete, I put in a master plugin called Ozone 8. Um, but before that, I also put in IR Live Reverb, which is what I like to put on the master track a lot, just to give all of the sound effects, you know, some space. And that's basically how I went through it. A very simple sound, but with correct processing and interesting use of layering different sounds. Um, you can get something quite unique and creative, um, especially when you pay attention to all the details. But yeah, that's basically it. This is uh, just the beginning of my journey to add sound designer to my list of credits. I'm going to be getting a lot more practice in. Um, and as I try and attempt to do more sound effects, I'll probably be doing more breakdown videos like this. So get ready for that. Your boy is about to learn to become a sound designer, gang, gang. But yeah, let me know if you liked this video um, and would like to see more. Uh, but in the meantime, take care, stay safe and stay awesome.